this video, I'm going to show how to set up a very, very simple heating and cooling system for our example building here that we have been constructing in Wolfie Passive. So as always, I'm starting here in our Wolfie Passive file. You can see our small single family home that we have been modeling throughout this video series. And let's take a look first at how we might build out a heating and cooling system for the building here in Wolfie Passive. And then we'll shift over to Rhino and Grasshopper and take a look at how we can enter the same data on that side. So if we wanted to build out a heating and cooling system for our building, the first thing I would do is come in here to Systems. I would go to our Ideal Air System. And as you can see here, we've already got a mechanical ventilation system, which has been built out. So one piece of our, our overall home mechanical system is already completed. But of course, as you can see here, we have no heating equipment. We have no cooling equipment no domestic hot water equipment. We'll come back and talk about that in later sessions. Um, but right now, let's just keep our eyes on the heating and cooling side of the coin. So if I wanted to add some heating and cooling system, uh, heating and cooling equipment here, how would I do it? Well, I would just come over here to new, and I would add a new, and then I would come into the drop down, and I would select whatever piece of equipment I want to be uh, using. So maybe I want to use a boiler, Maybe I want to use a heat pump. Maybe I want to use uh, electric resistance. For our project here, just 2022, let's assume that we're working in a cold climate, um, you know, n northern hemisphere, um, this U.S., Canada. Um, so probably we're going to be heating and cooling our building using a heat pump, heat pump equipment. So let's let's use heat pump um, uh, for our purposes here. And then, of course, the way we would say, oh, I'm going to use this equipment for heating is to just come over here and check that this equipment is providing all the heating. Now, Wolfie's going to start complaining at this point. It's going to say, hey, you said you're using heat pump, but you haven't given me enough data for me to accurately calculate the overall performance of the building. So one of the things we would have to do is come over here to our heating system, our new heating system, and we would have to give it some information. So, you know, what's the COP? Um, I don't know, three. What's the um, system performance ratio? Three, three, uh, the inverse typically the inverse of the COP. Um, we are not going, in this video, I don't want to get into, we don't, I don't, this, this, way beyond the scope of this video to talk about all of the detailed uh, inputs required for heat pumps. It's a whole universe unto itself. What we want to focus on in this video is really just how we input and where we input the data using the Honeybee pH tools. Um, you know, the questions of how and what the right numbers are, are it's a whole different, uh, sort of set of questions. Um, talk to your FIAS certifier about that if you have any questions on that front. But um, how we input the numbers, once we know what they are, um, is going to be the subject of, of this video here. So uh, some way or another, we decided that 3 was the right number and 0.33 was the right number. And now you can see that Wolfie is calculating our results down here. So that would be used for the heating side. This is a very simple. We have a couple other methods for heat pumps here, but let's just keep it on the, the simplest method of you know uh, uh, modeling a heat pump system for heating. Now maybe for cooling we want to do the same thing. So I'll come back over here to my ideal air system, and I'll add a new piece of equipment. Oops, and I'll say that it is also a heat pump, but this heat pump is going to be used for space cooling. So I'll turn on space cooling. And for this one, if we come down here, you'll notice there's no real inputs. And that's, um, Wolfie has kind of a funny structure here. In order to input the parameters for a cooling heat pump, it's actually under the distribution tab. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, and it's here in the cooling. So we have a cooling distribution tab, which is actually where you input all the parameters for the equipment. Who knows why things are structured the way they are, um, but this is where you find the data. So here is where you can come in and input things like the, you know, the total CFM of the cooling system. I don't know, it's probably for a building like this, 800 to 1,000 CFM, something like that. Um, you know, is it variable flow? What's the total size here? It's, um, what's that, three tons, um, 34,000 BTUs, um, you know, so, somewhere in that range. And then what's the COP? So here's where we would model out the equipment for the cooling side of our heat pump system here. And notice down here that my source energy is now quite a bit different than it was when we started. Um, obviously, we have the equipment now, which is providing heating, providing cooling, working at some level of efficiency. Um, and so Wolfie is able to more accurately calculate the source energy here. So, okay, so that's how we would model that in Woofy. But obviously, we don't want to be doing that in Woofy. We want to do that back in our Rhino file. So how do I enter all of this information? How do I build out these systems? 
back in our Rhino file. Let me go ahead and close this and go back to our Rhino Grasshopper file here. All right, so I am back in my Rhino file, as always. Here's my little building here. And same uh, Grasshopper file that we have been working in and building up over time. We've got our geometry spaces, schedules, mechanical, occupancy appliances, etc. And what we want to do is come in here to the middle to this mechanical section. So I'm going to zoom in on the mechanical section here. And what we need to do in order to build out a very, very simple mechanical system for our building is we need to build and enter some space heating systems and space cooling systems. And we can have more than one, but for our purposes here, we're just going to restrict ourselves to just one, just to demonstrate the functionality. Um, so we're going to build a new space heating system and a new space cooling system, and then we're going to add them to these honeybee rooms. We're getting room one and room two here. So we're going to add the, the heating system and the cooling system to both rooms. So, so the systems that we're going to design are going to supply heating and cooling to both of the honeybee rooms. All right, so how do we do that? Well, let me zoom out a little bit here. I'm going to come up to my honeybee pH. Uh, rollout and in the honeybee pH rollout we have all of our different um, tools we've already looked at how we can use this create ventilation system to create a simple fresh air ventilation system and right next to it we have create cooling system and create heating system so let's start with our heating system let's grab this create heating system component and we'll drop that onto the canvas now you can see that it's complaining and what does it want? It says set the system type to configure the user input. So I don't have any inputs over here. What it's asking for is what type of system are you gonna build? Are you gonna do a boiler? Are you gonna do a heat pump? Are you gonna do, you know, what have you? Well, what are our options? Well, if we come up here, we have a little uh, a list here um, of heating system options, which if I drop onto the canvas, you'll notice that we have a whole bunch of different configuration options here. And, you know, the simplest, of course, something like direct electric. So if we say, oh, this is a direct electric, there's not going to be very many inputs. By contrast, if we say, oh, this is a heat pump, notice now we're getting different inputs into this component here. So depending on what type of system you want to model, you just select it from the drop-down list. So let's see what we get by default. Let's take a look at the default output of this component. The default output of this component is a heat pump with a COP of 2.5, total system performance ratio of uh, 0.4. So, you know, that's not great. It's 2022 as I'm recording this. You know, we can get better equipment than this, but this is probably a good middle of the road kind of conservative estimate for the annual COP performance, uh, heating system performance of, of, of a heat pump, piece of heat pump equipment in a cold climate. So fine, all right, we could just kind of leave it at that. If we wanted to, we could always come in here and we could set this to 3. 2, 8, or you know, whatever, whatever the number is that we think is correct, and notice that number will track through. So we could do that. We could leave it, leave it set to some number. Again, I'm not going to talk about where these numbers come from. That's a whole other sort of subject. Uh, but once you know what the right COP number for your equipment is, you can input it here, and then all you have to do is take the heating system and apply the heating system to our honeybee spaces, or our honeybee rooms. And when we do that, let's come over to our export here. We will export our project. And then I'll go back to Woofy Passive. And in Woofy Passive, as always, I'll just go up to File, Open, go to my desktop, filter for XML files, grab the one with the latest timestamp, open that up, and let's see what we got. So I'm here and I've got my if we go down to our ideal layer system notice now we have a new we all have of course our mechanical ventilation system as we did before but we've now added our new heat pump system and if we take a look at the heat pump system here notice that our COP is being set by our grasshopper now of course we get a default name a big ugly name here we could we could give it a name if we want to back in Rhino but because we didn't we're getting a default ID string um, you know we can always override that all right, so that's how we get our heating system in. What about our cooling system? We'll go back to Rhino, and we'll go back to our mechanical systems section here. So we've got a so we've got a, a ventilation system, we've got a heating system, and then lastly, we're going to use a cooling system. So same as before, we're going to come up here to our Honeybee pH ribbon. We'll come over, and this time we'll use create cooling system. So drop that onto the canvas, and just like heating system, this is looking for a system type. And so just like heating. We have another one of those little value lists. We can grab that cooling one. So this one, the cooling. And this has our different types of cooling systems. Are you going to cool the building using the ERV? Give it 
dedicated recirculation air air conditioning system. You have dehumidification uh, or radiant panels um, for you know a normal uh, a normal let's say no northeast uh, heat pump system. Um, you know forced air heat pump system that would be this recirculating air system. Um, you know in a humid climate like uh, New York where I am recording this, things like radiant panels would would be super common because of the condensation issues. Um, but of course, you can model them if you uh, want to. But in our purpose, in our case here, we're gonna—I'm just gonna model a normal heat pump recirculating air system. And notice we get a default system out of the box with a cooling COP of four. So notice down here we get a cooling COP of four, and we also get some additional values being set here: a 10 kilowatt system. So what's that? Three, like a three-ton system, something like that. Um, we get some airflow rates. So we get some default rates here. Uh, of course, we could go back and override any of those. So for a little building like this, what do you think? Is the three ton system about right? Um, probably. Let's see if this works. If we said KBTU per hour, let's see, what does that translate to? Whoops, did I give it the wrong number? Oh. So 12, okay, there we go. So this is, kilo, so it's looking for kilowatts. Sorry, so it's looking for uh, kilowatts. You can see the capacity flows through there. So there's our kilowatts. Um, and we could change the COP if we felt like four was a, a little bit too high. Maybe we set that to, again, maybe 3.5 or 3.6, whatever whatever the number is that you would use for, for your system. So this would be the COP for the system there. All right, so in any event, here's our cooling system. Maybe we'll give this one a name too. We'll call this um, Ed's AC system. And we'll give that the name there in our display name. All right, and we're going to add that to our project same way as before. We're going to take the output of our cooling system, and we're just going to take the output and connect it up to our cooling system input there. So now we have our heating system added and our cooling system added. And I'll go over here to export, and I'll print that out. We'll come back to our Woofy Passive. We'll go up to File, go to Import, go back to my desktop, grab the new time step file, now, if I go down to my ideal air system, I should see that I've got a heating system and I've got a new cooling system heat pump coming through. If we go to distribution cooling, I've got all my values coming through here. And so here's my 3.5 and here's my you know, 44 ton, three and a half ton system uh, coming through there. And of course, we can set all of these values back in our, our uh, back in our, our, our uh, Rhino model. And now I can come down here, I can recalculate my shading. And at this point, we're actually getting some much better results when it comes to things like total source energy for the project because we have our full mechanical system almost entirely built out. We have our mechanical ventilation system, heating system, cooling system. The only system that we have not yet built out is our domestic hot water system. And I think we'll tackle that in the next few videos. Uh, that'll probably take us a, a few videos to work through. Domestic hot water is a little more complicated. But we're pretty close, and hopefully this makes sense. Now, this is just a very quick introduction to mechanical system modeling, just to show you the sort of basics. Um, you know, this can get become quite complex if you have lots of different equipment in this in the system. Um, but you know, you do it follow the same pattern, and then of course there's a whole another universe around how to figure out what the right numbers are for these types of things. But we'll leave that aside for now. We don't need to worry about that at the moment. Um, I just wanted to demonstrate the basic functionality here when it came to modeling mechanical systems inside of our uh, Honeybee pH model. So we will leave that one here. And, and when we come back, I think we will, as I just said, turn our attention to the, the last piece of the mechanical system puzzle that I want to go over as part of this um, introductory series of videos, which is the domestic hot water system. So so in the next video, I think we'll, we'll get started modeling um, and, and thinking about how we can enter things like hot water tanks, piping, recirculation, fixtures, all of that kind of stuff. So I'll see you back in the next video and we'll jump into domestic hot water.